It's a nice chilly morning in the shop. I didn't feel the need to put on the heat because 49 actually isn't that bad once you get moving. I'm clearing off my bench here in the area where I used to have my computer. I'm taking the computer out of here so there's more room and I'm less distracted by it. I still got my TV, but it's not hooked up to anything right now. I hope to get like a little DVD player with uh, with like an ethernet connection on the back because I still have my internet down there. So I can plug it in and watch YouTube if I want to. And I'm testing out my old RPM gauge here. I had it, a big apparatus built right here, but I kind of dismantled it so I can just store this gauge up there because it's nice to know how fast your tools are. This is a Bauer brushless drill right here on high speed. So about 1,621 RPM. It's nice to have that information when you're testing tools to make sure everything's working properly. So I'm gonna continue cleaning up here and hopefully do something with this mess, store some of it and take some of it up to the house, like my computer, and we'll see what happens the rest of the day. Well, I have my area set up over here with some of my tool deals, some stuff I put in the marketplace and you guys have access to that as well. You just got to tell me if you want something that you see. Basically, I got a lot of good deals on some heart stuff. There's some Makita stuff. Over here, I got a classic Craftsman wrench right there. Real beauty. Some Wiss snips. Got that Honda wrench, motorcycle wrench. Got another one of those to clean up too. And then over here, I just have a bunch of USA made Craftsman stuff. And one that looks like, I think it's Billings. Trying to get a full set of those. Just finished this rigid pipe wrench, painted it black. I think I showed you guys that. Really, really cool. Really just cool stuff. I put a little piece of masking tape on it because I write numbers on them for what number inventory they are. And then I got some power tools that I'm selling here too. Got my impact driver, impact wrench here, Ryobi. A couple rigid brushless tools, some rigid high output batteries. Got a little area where I can take pictures if I need to with my heart lights up there to illuminate it. So hopefully something comes out of that. I'm trying to work as hard as I can to get some of this stuff done. Got some more stuff up there. Got the Bosch planer. Got the Makita radio. All these are for sale. Just trying to fix what I need to fix. Some of them I don't have to do anything to. Some of them I have to clean up, like a lot of the hand tools and stuff. But working hard trying to get it done. I bought this big planer at that American Pickers place I went to and done. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart so I can get it ready because I know this will be worth a good bit once it's all said and done. I already sold the other planer, so that was pretty quick. So I figured it might be nice to get another one ready. First thing that comes off is a knob here and the screw. Then we have this piece right here which sandwiched the blade in, but the blade has this little plate that's screwed to it. And they're hard to separate, so I'm going to hit that with some WD-40. Try to separate that and take some of these screws out down here now. And this will come up, and then we can take the handle off, which is busted, but I should be able to fix that. So we're trying to get all that stuff apart, see how cooperative it is. It looks rough, but it doesn't look impossible. This is where the butt clenching starts, where i got to take apart, not this one, but get this screw out of the base, which is already bent slightly. And there's a lot of rust right there on this screw and trying to get the pin out right here so I can get these pieces apart. Oh, ample opportunities for breakage. So we'll have to hope that that does not occur. Get as many pieces apart as I can because the more you can take it apart, the better the restoration will be. I don't want to have to leave stuff together, but I don't know what's going to happen either. I was able just to unscrew the knob here I'm taking this screw out, a small piece right here, just so I can remember for later. Not just for you guys, for me too. So most of those pieces have come out that right here, however that works. See if we can't figure that stuff out and see what we can do about it, clean it up at least. Right here is a little pin you can see right there that I'm having to hit out with my punch and going very, very slow so I can take this apart. I still don't know about this thing right here. You gotta figure out how this even comes apart. I'm not sure. Maybe one of you guys know. So if you watch this video and haven't done this yet, you'd be like, here's how it goes, Zach. Let me tell you. And I'll be like, thank you. And that's how that's going to be. It's hard to believe, but this thing is actually coming out. 
I thought I was going to have to shower it in WD-40. I'm still going to shower the other thing in WD-40. Although, I could try, but maybe it's better not to try for this. Could try, though. But I'm not going to. I figured I'll have to drill out this little rivet deal right here because there's no other way for it to come out, as far as I can tell. You guys can tell me how wrongly I did this whenever I get to it. <laughs> hole in there. Let's see if I can get that out now. Let me see if I can not put a little tap in over the top. This won't fit down inside the hole, but maybe it'll help tap it into the hole. I don't think that did much of nothing. I could go one drill bit size up and just completely drill it out. Maybe that's what I should have done to begin with. So I used the next size up drill bit and was able to drill through there. So I'm just going to have to make some sort of little rivet or something, which I think I'm going to have to do on a lot of these older things because to take them apart i think i might have to drill out a rivet or etch out one side of the rivet so i can punch it through the other way or something like that so gonna have to figure it out sooner or later but this is a good first step at least i didn't destroy anything too badly right let's give it some wd-40 so i got a crap ton of wd-40 or generic spray lubricant soaking on them things i'm letting it soak for a while and then i have my handle here kind of wedged in place with some wood glue on it, I'll just chip that excess off tomorrow, I think. I'm not going to try to mess with it now. Or should I? I should probably wipe it off. Oh my gosh. No, I'll do it tomorrow. It's been a really long day. I've been listing stuff all day over here for the tool shop. And I'm tired. Frankly, I'm tired. Some of them didn't work out. I sold something today. Actually, it wasn't even a tool. It was a wagon. Just happened to have a wagon. Got from the auction. Made a little bit of money on that. So, just got to... Balance out how much money can you make? How much should you charge? You don't want to undercharge. You don't want to overcharge. You got to figure out how to do best by the people that are buying it. Give them a good deal while you still make some money. That's a challenge. That's what I'm working on. And uh, I reckon I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless you.